Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. And in this video, going to do a review of the Jura 12 year old single malt Scotch whiskey. So, this is part two in a series that I'm doing in looking at uh, Jura Distillery. In my previous video, I reviewed the Jura journey and we looked at the history of Jura Distillery. In this video, we're going to look at the uh, production of Jura uh, Distillery. Then I'm gonna do a review of this whiskey and talk a little bit about their production and how that is reflected in the whiskey. Jura Distillery derives its malted barley from Baird's. Their water source comes from Market Lock. and they use a semi-louder mash tun. They have six washbacks, which have a capacity of 48,300 liters, and they get their yeast from Kiri. Jura Distillery's mash ferments for 54 hours, They have four stills, that is two wash stills and two spirit stills. And their spirit still has a lantern shape. Which are heated by steam pans and coils. They have a tube type condenser their new make strength is 71%. Their total capacity to produce is 2.2 million liters per year. And their filling strength is 63.5% alcohol by volume. The whiskey is then aged in rack warehouses. The Jura 12-year-old single malt Scotch whiskey. It's aged for 12 years in bourbon casks, finished in Oloroso sherry casks. It's bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for around $40. So having the second largest stills in Scotland, you can expect something similar to Glenmorangie in terms of their spirit. Real high stills, you know, Glenmorangie, tallest in Scotland, you know, as tall as a giraffe. Well, something similar to that uh, you have in Jura, which is gonna give it a lighter spirit. Now, one of the things I find rather surprising is Jura, you know, it's an island distillery, neighboring Isla. Why not put that to your advantage and create peated whiskeys uh, that are maybe akin to something you might find on Isla, uh, but give it its own distinctiveness in Jura. The second thing, is that the fact that some of the whiskeys are warehoused uh, in Invergordon on the mainland, they're not taking advantage of uh, the seaside character available to them, which might give uh, the whiskeys perhaps a little bit of a salty sea breeze character that we find in a lot of Isla distilleries. And then the third thing is the low ABV. The fact that, you know, two out of, or three out of the core range are at 40 ABV, you know, they just don't come across the way I think most whiskey fans uh, are gonna want. So I don't think they're really using what they have to their best advantage. Now, that being said, this is a nice whiskey. Uh, on the nose, get a lot of citrus, a little bit of orange, and there's a slight chocolatey character there. It reminds me of orange uh, Tootsie Pops, uh, that when you get down to close to the center and you start getting close to the chocolate center and the chocolate starts showing through the Tootsie Pop. Something very similar to that. So a little bit of orange, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of pineapple, some tropical characters, uh, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of ginger spice and some maltiness. On the palate. 
pretty much moderately sweet all the way through. Not super sweet, but it's moderately sweet all the way through. Not much variation. What you get on the nose, you get on the palate. You get that orange candy character, followed by just a little bit of chocolate in the middle. On the back end, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of maltiness, perhaps a little bit of pineapple and some other tropical characters. It's medium bodied, moderate length uh, finish, slight mouth coating feel. It doesn't feel too thin, which is sort of surprising uh, considering it's at 40 ABV. It didn't have a lot of heft, but it does have a slight mouth coating feel to it. Overall, it's a generally nice whiskey that if you can get it from 30 to $40, I would say it's a nice introductory whiskey to introduce your friends. Same you know, play that you might have with a, a Glen Morangy uh, 10 year old. Basically the same kind of whiskey uh, or in terms of the profile, the character or where it fits in the whiskey uh, market. Be nice for making cocktails and so on and so forth. But for the whiskey aficionado who's looking for something more, something more complex, uh, yeah, it's probably not going to be a whiskey for you. So it's a nice dram, but nothing spectacular going on here. Uh, what would I give it in terms of a score? I'm going to go solid 85 points, a solid 85 points, basically a B score. All right, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for when I go live. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.